Radio Free Sparrow. Hello everyone, welcome to Radio Free Scarrow, episode number 714. I am Stephen in Vancouver. I am Warren in Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. Yeah, I'm visiting Warren. Um, hi Warren. Um, Hello. I'm in your From home. the next room over. Yeah, this is the same. You, you recorded in the living room when you were here a couple weeks ago, right Chris? Yes, Yeah, I did. Looking out the windows at the many different buildings that are in Vancouver and and the, the bridges where they shoot car commercials on Warren tells me and and Deadpool movies Deadpool oh is it really they shoot Deadpool on this on that bridge right there I didn't know that a bit of it yeah oh wow that's exciting although I think it was a CG version of that bridge to be honest with you because it crashes and burns oh well hmm. actually I can see the embers still on uh, on parts of it. I can't at all. <laughs> yes. I can't at all. I'd say I, I quite like the city. I haven't, I haven't properly been in 25, seven, long time. Like band trips in high school is when the last time I properly went to, to Vancouver. And do, are you really ever properly seeing a city when you're going on a band trip when you're in your teens? No, you're not. So No, absolutely not. So, Giving chaperoned all to hell for good reason, probably. I know, and I, I haven't yet dug out. I think I probably will um, uh, dig out the EG So <laughs> location guide book and see if not yeah. not to seek out any, uh, but just to see if we accidentally stumbled across some um, locations on our wanderings on Saturday. It's kind of fun, but um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. No, no, we're here, dear listener, to talk about. Watching this space, yeah, yeah, you bet. Watch it. The, the The excitement is is beyond the pale. <laughs> it's building. It's building. Everyone. The the BBC uh, dropped a, a short teaser saying to make space on November twenty third, twenty nineteen, which of course is the fifty sixth uh, anniversary of the original broadcast of Doctor Who. Uh, and it just says, uh, once again, watch the space. So what a, on October 31st, a.k.a. original, well, semi-original Brexit day, they had another little yeah. image that said, watch this space. So I can't tell if we're, if, if, if we're just going to continue to watch the space on November 23rd. Will there be a teaser on November 23rd? Will be, there be a trailer for Doctor was, Who? Will, will the show drop? It won't drop on November 23rd. That'd be ridiculous. What was the one My guess the, is that there'll be a trailer. What was the the one from the other year? Save the date. Save the date was the fiftieth anniversary. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, Save was, the day. It was, was. Yeah, pretty much. A, yeah, we all knew some stuff was going down that day. Well, yeah, we knew it was the, pretty much what was going on that day. It was the fiftieth anniversary. They knew it anyway. But yes. the, the fact that they actually called, said save the day, which made more sense once you actually see the in the episode, it was clever and stuff. This, mm, I feel like. Uh, well, last 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 week we got that still image. This week we have a <laughs> ten or twelve second little video clip. So, yeah. does that mean we're making progress? Uh, if you can call it that. Here's 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 what the internet has resorted to when it comes to figuring out the 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 schedules and history of of where Doctor Who is going to be. So, uh, someone found a sales spreadsheet. <laughs> Bear with me. For TV New Zealand, right? TV New Zealand is the the home of Doctor Who in New Zealand, and uh, they have seen that that basically what what this this uh, schedule is for like November through until the end of um, January is a uh, ad sales sheet. Like I don't know what the, what the rate is. They give a number, like a, a monetary number for each slot in the schedule in each show, and. Um, and what ad rate they would sort of command. And on January 2nd at 9.30 p.m. in New Zealand, it says Doctor Who, right? With like an ad thing. And and then the next, every Friday after that for the rest of January, there's another one, but for slightly less. So we, we've done some digging 
and I've asked people in New Zealand what the deal with this is. And it says, actually, that does match with what New Zealand did last year and that it showed it on demand like Monday morning, I guess, like at 9.30 a.m., shortly after it aired in the U.K. Uh, and then the actual uh, terrestrial airing was on Friday nights at nine, at uh, at 7.30 p.m. So it looks like, based on this Zapprudering, this sales sheet for TV New Zealand... <laughs> I kind of love that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Zapruding the sales sheet for TV New Zealand. That 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 Doctor Who series 12 potentially will premiere as either episode 1 goes out New Year's Day or it's a New Year's Day special followed by series 12. This is what this is what we are are trying to determine. Maybe all will become clear on November 23rd uh, when the when the BBC uh, finally present something in the space that it's been telling us to watch for the past couple weeks but we'll see just in just in terms of mood Mm -hmm. this does feel like the sad desperation right before we get something (laughs) that we normally have with doctor who so so yes we're a bit strung out and waiting we have been waiting a long time uh, and between now and then as well next weekend is uh children in need which uh, last year we didn't get anything like trailers or anything of the sort. I but, think we had a um, clip of, a, of an upcoming episode. A was about clip it. of a young, yeah. young girl in the uh, TARDIS. Um, oh, the yeah, TARDIS that's right, stuff. it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, assume, I assume that means we're not going to get anything formal from children in need either yeah. until the, you know, the week after on the 23rd. Yeah, I, I get that impression too. So, <laughs> which is basically, so we've kind of like set aside, we were going to do a whole episode on or anything like that. We sort of had like, things earmarked for like oh could be comic-con no not comic-con oh could be new york comic-con no not new york comic-con oh maybe children in need no probably not children in need either so there's like three big uh opportunities for publicity and um nothing so uh, november yeah. 23rd i suppose if you're going to choose but- a day of your own choosing to market your the new series i suppose you may as well choose the the most famous mm-hmm. date in doctor who history november 23rd to to launch it it's a Saturday. If, if it's a trailer, the zapruitering of that trailer will be insane. <laughs> Always is. Oh, I like that though. I no, I, but I mean, it'll be a next a next level of that because we'll have just nothing else to work off of. That's true. I kind of like that though. I, we haven't we haven't done some proper like trailer analysis in in some time because we've kind of like come to expect trailers when they happen. This is all. Oh, it's oh, there's a trailer here. What's this about? You know, and and the, like people are like just plumbing the depths of like uh, the first Star Wars. Like God, the first the first Force Awakens trailer was madness. Everyone was just going crazy trying to determine what what the entire plot of the movie would be based on this. Like, and, and I will I could from previous experience i know i will get it all wrong i will assume stuff is later in the season when it's from the first two episodes like the assumptions will be made and they will be incorrect my war doctor theories were insane <laughs> oh, don't, don't you and completely completely wrong right oh i didn't know you had to i can't remember what theories you had for the i don't remember what they were but i remember they were wrong <laughs> a lot of people wrong. i uh, i did appreciate your tweet the other day Stephen, about the uh the summary of the 2019 um <laughs> publicity for doctor Who. yeah so i tweeted out as, as we try to determine the, the the broadcast schedule for series 12 by based on new zealand tv listings here's a summary and like i wish i was joking but it was literally a shot of jody and a, and a jadoon and that watched the space image and that was it that was it through 10 months yeah. 10 months of publicity resulted in two photos uh that don't seem connected whatsoever it just feels like they uh, we've said this often i just feel like they could have been teasing stuff out because you know throughout the course of the year you don't have to say here's who's returning or something like you know tease keep the thing in the public eye you know we are fans of the show we are paying attention to this we are we are wondering where things are when it comes to doctor who and when it's coming back but just imagine if you're just like someone who's yeah. just existing in in the real world <laughs> those weirdos well, and uh, who are just like sort of oh doctor who's back on i guess i'll watch that you know they they have no idea they have no idea but if doctor who's coming especially, back especially especially coming Especially coming off the heels where the ratings were, especially for um, the woman who fell to earth, like the best in a decade or whatever, yeah. because because the general public got back on board. Um, and I think you'll find, according to YouTube, the show is an abject failure, so case closed. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's exactly the amount of time you should give that I argument. Know. 
Yeah, I know what you mean, Chris. Like, you know, it, it's it's like, hey, Doctor Who's back in the public eye, and and but but no, they just basically took 2019 off completely. I mean, they made the show obviously, but like for and all for all intents and purposes it, for the public, it's no, it's not happening until like 11, almost 12 months after the last episode. They finally might drop something regarding the future of the show. And we've, we, we as fans, we've completely written off the potential for a Christmas episode. I think so. I think it's, uh, I, th- ba- ba- <laughs> I refer to my earlier remarks on the uh, TV New Zealand sales listings uh, spreadsheet that, yes, I think it's going to be a New Year's Day, which is intriguing actually, because that means that New Zealand would basically, if this is correct, um, sort of have that that New Year's Day special be on like later that night. So they might do the, the, the usual on-demand airing like at 9.30, 10 in the morning or something on, on January 2nd. And then instead of waiting for uh, uh, the Friday, because it's the New Year's, the January 2nd is a Thursday, um, they'll actually air the New Year's Day episode like later that day on its uh, terrestrial airing. And then for the rest of the episodes, they'll they'll wait to the end of the week. But... Who knows, everyone? Who knows? I suppose we'll all find out on November Watch this 23rd. Face. Hey, maybe they'll maybe they'll be talking about that uh, November 23rd whatever trailer teaser still image at uh, an unearthly convention, which is taking place the anniversary weekend, 23rd, 24th in Long Island um, with with an assorted variety of guests uh, like um, uh, Paul McGann, Sylvester McCoy, Louise Jameson, etc. A whole bunch of people are there um, at the Ramona Plaza in Holtzville, New York. That's happening in a couple weeks' time. And then the, the weekend after that, it's uh, it's um, Chicago Tardis, which I'll be at. With uh, such, there'll be similar guests in a way. If you can't make one, you could make the other with uh, Sylvester McCoy, Paul McGann, Tosin Cole, Arthur Darville will be there. Um, the cast of cast, the cast of cast, the cast of class will be there for the most part as well. So that's happening the last week and Thanksgiving weekend in Chicago, so convention season and then uh i think gallifrey one's um ramping up with another guest announcement in the probably before the end of the um the year as well so convention season i haven't bought my tickets yet for flying to gallifrey nope. one and yeah, right. it's just going up i just keep expecting it to drop or fall or something oh. but no it's just going up and up we we bought our we bought our flights a little while ago yeah. maybe that's a good yeah, thing i regret it in a way you just got you know i follow the little hopper I app seem, saying hey, i seem to remember uh, I seem to remember emailing you when we bought our flight saying, hey, here's the prices. Yep. And it stayed at that. It stayed that. And then it says, and then the little hopper app said, oh, you should wait. It'll drop. It'll drop. It'll be fine. And then it dropped like 20 mm-hmm. bucks. And it says, you should book now. And I go to book now. It says, actually, it's a lot more now. So That's just it. Every time I look at hopper, like I've, I've, I've used it to track things here and there over the years. And when it says, wait, 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 you can save money. It That's just it. It's like 20 bucks. So I'm like, why do I care about 20 bucks. 20 bucks i mean like i'll spend it now i'll get it done that way the booking is made i've locked in this price for good or for bad i mean it's airfare of course it's gonna be for good or for bad peace you of know. mind is worth 20 bucks for sure peace of mind is absolutely mm-hmm. worth i said that bucks. i haven't done it yet so but i also have the yeah, advantage of being in vancouver where yeah. it's cheaper yeah you're 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 in a you're in a definitely a different situation from steven and i very different we have a lot, we have, a lot of hollywood one, garbage gets made here which this is the only good thing about it the one good thing if we're if we're looking to get direct flights, we have one option each way. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Terrible to live in Edmonton. Well, for that, anyway. I like living in Edmonton, apart from the airfare. But um, anyway, hey, uh, those of you in, Brit- in Britain, uh, first off, hello. And uh, secondly, BritBox is now a thing in the UK. It launched um, uh, this past Thursday without Doctor Who, we should say. Uh, Doctor Who, yeah. all the classic Doctor Who, the same amount anyway that's coming to, uh, that's on BritBox in the U.S. and Canada will be showing up on, on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. Maybe maybe they're planning a Doctor Who Christmas special, and that's why I have no idea. I'm just... Well, I think it's, nothing. I think they found the Feast of Stephen. <laughs> and it'll premiere, <laughs> it'll premiere on BritBox. Premiere, that'd be awesome. Hooray, finally. That would be superb, yeah. Um, the Yeah, the entirety of uh, of classic Doctor Who, including all them, their, uh, their, them, Dalek uh, episodes that weren't on the initial launch, basically everything but the missing episodes, but also including some missing episodes because they uh, they include some of the animated stuff and the uh, Telesnap recon for the Wheel of Space, which has only shown up on BritBox so far. So yeah, it's uh, it it's it will be available on BritBox in the UK December twenty sixth, but the service 
as a whole is available now. There was there was some concern over the usefulness of of BritBox in in Britain, mm-hmm. uh, and obviously we we, we exist uh, in a way uh, in an echo chamber right. with the people we know and and, and whatever. And, um, but I've seen quite a number, like five or six, maybe <laughs> quite a on, number on indeed. Face. Quite a number. Yeah. Let's 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 draw from that sure. sample group. Okay, absolutely. Uh, people on Facebook talking about how much they already like BritBox oh, okay. and, and the stuff that's on there and Hey, isn't it neat to see stuff that I haven't thought about in 20 years mm-hmm. and all that yeah, kind of right stuff. And one, one of the things that, that has kind of changed, I guess, with the British launch is so like the service itself was predominantly ITV and, and BBC stuff, but channel four is now on board. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, so there's going to be some Channel Four content, whatever, whatever that's going to be um, added into the mix as well. So just, just that much, that much more depth and breadth of of content. And uh, but yeah, the, the the initial things I have seen from from people have been quite positive about what's on there oh, already. Okay. And that's without Doctor Who for another six weeks or whatever it mm-hmm. is. Yeah, it's a handy it's a handy place to have all of Classic Doctor. Again, this podcast is not brought to you by BritBox or anything like that. I just think it's no. neat. I think it's neat to just have it streaming whenever you want it. It's just a cool thing. There's also, and I don't know if it's in the article that it, uh, it'll be in the show notes, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff coming off Netflix uh, in the near term that's going to make its way to BritBox. So that that'll either Tick off a lot of people or, or sweeten the pot. I don't know which. Or both. Or both. Yes. This is the great, uh, the great yeah. um, scattering of the streaming properties now that Netflix's deals are ending and every single service is offering their own streaming service uh, for a price. And so, As has been foretold. Yep. Even, even Midsummer Murders is leaving Netflix for crying out loud. I mean, the, the venerable Midsummer Murders is available everywhere. All 6,000 ev- seasons of it? Yes. Ev- it's available <laughs> everywhere else. BritBox, Prime TV, every a whole bunch of places, but it's not on. At least it's not in Canadian Netflix anymore, which I find that that was like the last straw. Thinking, oh, this is serious. This is serious. Things are leaving Netflix for their own their own places. But there's also, well, speaking of Midsummer Murders, they're also trying a little tie-in where they premiere a couple episodes on BritBox before they air on terrestrial TV. That's impressive. Just to try to get people to to sign yeah. up. Huh. Well, interesting. Cool. Yay, BritBox uh, in the UK. Um, uh, also, uh, in North America-ish, coming soon-ish, March 24th, apparently, according to this little template website on Amazon.com, not .ca well, it's, here it's in according, Canada. It's according to TV shows on DVD. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, March. And Mar- they, they, don't, they don't tend to publish stuff without... Um, like the formal press release from Warner right. or whomever. They're a good source. Uh, Sylvester McCoy Series 3, a.k.a. Series 26 uh, Blu-ray set will be finally coming to North America. I don't like the precedence of this. I don't like that we're waiting like three to four months for um, Blu-rays each time they come out, but um, but that seems to be the case. They're not available for pre-order at all. It still says un- currently unavailable, but um, but it's coming then. I imagine probably at least two more Blu-ray sets will have been announced and or delivered to the UK before we even get that. But um, March 24th Possibly. for those of you in North America, like we are. Do we do we know what the rumors are for the one after season 26? Nope. Like, are we going back to McCo- uh, Baker? Or no idea. No idea. Davidson? They they keep it they keep it fairly close to the vest, and like usually the artwork for some reason leaks out like a few hours before the official announcement, and that kind of spills the beans on things. So I I hope they manage to I think we knew, keep it. I think we knew quiet. season ten before before it's released. I they did it, they announced it at a panel or something like that. Uh, that there'd be a John Pertwee season or something like that. And so we narrowed it down because you have a one in five chance of getting it right. So yeah, they, they don't, they, they, they announce them when they announce them. And usually it happens like relatively like sort of in the lead up to the next one coming out, I think is usually when they, they drop news on it. So, so perhaps I've already lost track of what they have in the UK. I think, I think this is the only one we're waiting for now. Season 26, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is so far yeah. for, 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 for official announcements. Yeah. This, and then, mm-hmm. um, a week, 
week from Tuesday, is it? Uh, Mac or Terror finally comes out on oh my God. comes out on DVD in oh Canada. Oh my God, I've almost forgotten about that. Wow, Mac, I yeah, I, I, like I totally we're, forgot yeah. about that. We're on, we're on the cusp of faceless ones and whatever in the UK, and and we we still have yet to get Mac or Terror. Faceless ones and Fury from it's the Deep. Such yeah. a very weird story, too. Uh, what Mac or Terror? Yeah, it's just it's just odd. I haven't I haven't I watched recon of it such as it can be right. uh many many years ago uh but it's it's been quite a number of years so i look i look forward to to amazon dropping off the the dvd on my doorstep yeah. at some point soon that would be nice that would be nice well it's happening i pre-ordered it so long ago that i just forgot about it and i imagine like once i actually get a uh a shipping notification i'll go oh wow, look at that look at that thing how about that yeah. that thing i ordered all those years mind ago. you despite waiting and waiting and waiting for amazon to have a pre-order listing up for season 26 blu-rays uh for many months they've had a wheel in space dvd listing on <laughs> that's it. right they have so, even though that's not even coming so like, what the hell is that's going not on? even announced so who knows very very amazon strange. you heartless tease it's it it just is weird isn't it i uh yeah i'm, I'm actually looking through here i ordered uh i ordered macaterra actually apparently i've ordered it twice um i don't know how that works <laughs> i ordered it on the 18th <laughs> and then Ordered, pre-ordered on the 29th. I imagine that uh, that it was probably just an initial um, uh, listing, and then it actually got augmented with proper yes details. Yeah, title release that, that did happen. Yeah. yeah, release. So even even that little placeholder for the season 26 that'll probably change. So don't like get notifications on that because you probably won't be notified. It'll be an entirely new listing. So ah, and then um, also as well, I was saying as was, as I was saying before the recording. Uh, the the David Tennant Blu-ray um, uh, set was like thirty five bucks, so I sprung for that and got that the other day, and now it's back up to like sixty something. Oh, wow, in Canada, that's like which is crazy. Talk. Twice as much almost than it was when it launched, it was like thirty nine bucks when I bought it. So yeah. yeah, buy things when you get them. Sometimes it'll go. I also bought the uh, series one Eccleston series on Blu-ray, which came out like in twenty sixteen or seventeen or 16. something like that. Yeah, as summer of twenty sixteen. I wasn't even. I, didn't even remember that because I was thinking, oh, I have the DVDs, whatever. They won't be coming out any one Blu-ray ever. So, And then they did. And so I thought, well, it's silly to yeah. have a DVD set in there. Now I have a slightly slimmer Blu-ray set there instead, and I feel much better about <laughs> myself. I mean, that's some, basically it. It's slightly slimmer. That's pretty much <laughs> pretty it. Pretty much it. Some slight, slightly up-res long game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which also that's is, my Twitter. That was my new new Twitter name. Slightly up Yeah. Uh, we should also, I suppose, say that we're doing the commentaries again. We took a couple weeks off just for fun for other stuff that was a little more uh, timely, and we're resuming the uh, series eleven commentaries uh, with "It Takes You Away" with Nicole Hill from Black Tardis. Uh, so that's coming up very shortly, mm-hmm. actually, in this news list because there's only a couple things to get through. Um, uh, just a quick remark about last week's uh, offering for the the Terry Nation Army stuff. That was awesome. Oh, I had to listen to that. I had to listen to that, and I was like, just start to finish. It's like, holy crap! The amount of detail and effort that these guys put into it, I didn't realize. It's oh, it's it's stunning. Those videos are stunning. It, it's it's funny now that you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, Un, unlike unlike Warren. I have watched several of them. Yeah, but I watched one just, of them, uh, and it was good. Mm-hmm. But the the detail so and the, the report ends. The especially the 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 thing about like joining small town UK Facebook groups to find out if maybe there was like a, a fate in 1966 yeah. that had a, a Dalek show up. I know. Like this is, this reminds me of crazy. your missing episodes uh, um, crusade, Stephen, and the, uh, the lengths you would go to, like looking up ship manifest to see if things things had traveled the ocean yeah. from wherever it was. Yeah, except this actually paid off with uh, actual proper research and photos. That's the, that's the great thing about it. But yeah. Yeah, they do good work. It's funny because a, a friend is in uh, Seattle this weekend and um, posted a pic of like they have some horror movie exhibit with like screen props. And one of them is a Dalek from uh, either Revelation or Remembrance of the Daleks. And uh, so I immediately sent that picture to Gavin uh, from from Dalek 6388. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's the one that was like uh, sold at an auction for whatever price it was and stuff. If I had the money, I would have bought it myself. Like, of, of course, you know exactly which Dalek I'm talking about just by sending mm-hmm. one picture. It's like missing one of the, uh, the etheric beam locators on the skirt of it. Like, you know, there's, that's probably a whole story behind that, but yeah, 
Daleks. <laughs> on the next on the next episode of Terry Nation Army. Yeah, possibly. Quite possibly. Possibly. Um the uh so if also on twenty on the November twenty third, once you're reeling from the um either the trailer or the teaser for another trailer coming up, uh the BFI is hosting the season twenty six event with the screening of Curse of Fender, but they also are screening show in the life of John Nathan Turner, which is an 82 minute documentary on John J and T that's going to be on that uh, season 26 box set is directed by Chris Chapman. So, um, yeah, that's a big epic event at the BFI. Um, for that, the I saw a clip from that documentary on that illicit YouTube stream of the uh, MCMM, I think. The, anyway, the, the comic London Con, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And what I saw was great; like it looked really good. Yeah. Also, I found out that John Nathan Turner had a love affair with a lady, which very much surprised me. Yep, yeah. I think I think it's actually mentioned sort of in passing. I think in Richard Marson's book, I can maybe in more detail than I'm remembering, but uh, but Richard Marson wrote a, a book about JNT all those years ago, which we interviewed him about, and then everything broke in the news, and it was quite a crazy time. Well, whole documentary on his life, very interesting. Um, we'll see it in March of 2020, of course. Assuming our information's correct, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, so the tickets are already on sale for that. Maybe they're already sold out. Who knows for the BFI event on November 23rd. Um, also, uh, uh, Big Finish is doing another uh, First Doctor team as played by David Bradley and, and the rest of the cast from An Adventure in Space and Time. They're doing a new two-story set, Volume 4 of the First Doctor Adventures. Uh, one uh, proper sci-fi one and a, a, one a proper historical, as was the style at the time. Uh, Last of the Romanovs is the historical where they go back and then meet the Romanovs, the last star of Russia, which is pretty cool. But the the other one is written by Andrew Smith, our good friend Andrew Smith. Return to Scarrow, the Daleks return. That's pretty cool. Meeting up with the first Doctor and that team several years after the uh, their first visit in the second story ever. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. This uh, this all comes out in uh, March of twenty twenty. Daleks on audio. Yeah, Daleks on audio. So that so, almost seems too early for a big finish announcement. I, <laughs> Coming in 2022. <laughs> yeah, come on. Like, spread this out a little bit. You know, maybe maybe they should say, listen to this space and drop that a few times and then eventually... Uh, <laughs> maybe they shouldn't. Actually ch- drop the thing. Um, and uh, and lastly, from uh, from character options, uh, the the Sonic Screwdriver Collection, which has been out for a while now, but they've, they've they put a video of it. Uh, and it's on Amazon now of of a six uh, screwdriver collection. Not all of the screwdrivers. I hasten to add, it's notably missing the the twelfth and thirteenth doctors one and the war doctor one and the river song one. There's a whole bunch of variants, but uh, basically the third, fourth, fifth, seventh slash eighth uh, tenant, and then the Matt Smith sonic screwdriver all in one set for you to buy if you're looking to pad your collection of sonic screwdrivers available at good retailers everywhere all right um on that note uh after the break it's uh we'll dip back to our series 11 commentaries by traveling to norway aka probably somewhere in wales uh to watch it takes you away with our guest nicole hill from black tardis Welcome back. It is time to resume our Series 11 commentaries with Episode 9 of Series 11, It Takes You Away. And joining us today is Nicole Hill from Black Tardis. Hello, Nicole. Hello. Uh, uh, A, thanks for being on this. Um, It was nice of you to join us to watch uh, Doctor Who and talk nonsense with us. Um, But B, tell tell us about Black Tardis. When did that start up and and how's that going for you? It started... Uh, actually a few years ago, I've had it for a while, but I kind of used it. Like I just kind of would tweet things or, um, Tumblr things and it wasn't something I actively utilized, um, until the new doctor, uh, was announced and I was just very excited again about the show. And I just wanted to bring it back and kind of start focusing again on like commentary about, especially with the new companions and like having companions of color and having a female doctor. Like I was just really excited to get back to it. So, so is if is this to say that you were not a fan of the uh, of the Stephen Moffat era? I still watched the show um, uh-huh. during the Stephen Moffat era, but I wasn't like 
happily watching the show i wasn't like <laughs> i felt like at a point if you don't have much nice to say don't say anything so it was more just like let me watch it and then not get into the discourse because i could just stop watching it if it's really that big of a problem <laughs> um mm-hmm. so it was just more like i wasn't as excited about it um and i didn't want to just add to like criticism for no reason like it just got tired right Kind of like Warren talking about uh, the Sylvester McCoy era all the time. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, listen, you bring it up more than I do. I just to point that out. I know, because but when you, it's brought up, I will respond. Yeah, quite quite vociferously, and that's why we yes, always quite so. bring it up because you seem so annoyed. Anyway, um, uh, we're we're here to watch uh, it, it takes you away, uh, which is the ninth episode. We're almost done this whole series of commentaries. So this is quite something. Uh, so I assume everyone has got their legally purchased Blu-rays, uh, HD, DVD, VHS copies at the ready. Good, because here we go. We're going to watch the episode, folks. Begin to press play in three, two, one, play. There. Uh, so, I mean, we had to, uh, full disclosure, we had to do some jiggery-pokery when it came to all the people submitting their their list of episodes they wanted to do. And this one was on your list, Nicole, but it was fourth. So, um, <laughs> but, but it was, it was on your list though. So you, you were interested in doing this episode. Why, why this particular episode? Why did you put this one on your short list? Um, I would say it was probably because of Grace. Um, I of course really enjoyed her in the time that we had with her. And I just like that we got to revisit her for a little bit. And I think that was the main thing that drew me to wanting to do this one. Mm-hmm. Were you expecting her to turn up again in this series? Um, I figured they would probably do it. Um, the way they did it was interesting, especially at the, um, well, you'll see. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I expected it, but I thought it was interesting the way they implemented it. This, uh, this fooled me, this whole scene. I thought they actually went to Norway, but they didn't, they didn't go to <laughs> Norway. I thought they were going to go war with sheep, but no. Yeah. Well, well, the trees are very like, I mean, the, the mountains are composited. That's impressive. But the, the trees don't look like British trees, if you know what I mean. I don't. <laughs> I think they look like trees. Yeah, so. I, I don't know enough about trees to recognize. No. <laughs> yeah, nor do Ta- I. Talking like on over the, the human sheep thing. Yeah. This looks like Vancouver, so I don't know what the hell to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the... Wood, well, several wooded areas outside of Vancouver feature quite prominently across <laughs> any number of shows. Every uh, that's show. true. It is yeah. It is pretty much um, Films America. Every planet on Stargate. Uh, pretty much every CW show. Mm-hmm. I do like how she knows stuff about uh, <laughs> the TripAdvisor ratings from Soil. Yeah. I fear for her legs, the one exposed bit of her legs, because I would have bad frostbite by this point. It would not be pretty. I never even thought about it, actually. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Like like three inches exposed leg. Yeah. (laughs) Like in the winter with jeans on, my legs get all beat up. So I don't even know what I would do if I was doing that. Well, anyway, that's a bit of a wander off into pantaloon town <laughs> no no i mean uh capri pants i mean every time i see women in capri pants in like the fall and like sometimes they don't have like socks on or something it's just like look at that your ankle is like going to freeze <laughs> i like how we all become grandpa all of a sudden <laughs> yeah i know women have stronger ankles than than we men do like i feel like like you know if my sock is slipping down a little bit they go oh, geez i just felt a breeze i just felt the breeze on my ankle right there <laughs> let's get a leg warmer this was, holy cow, I don't know if they actually realized, this was shot in block one with the woman who fell to earth. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah, so like super early. I actually didn't realize that. Because the, um, the young actor who plays uh, Hana commented on how like how tight-knit a group they were. Uh, and I thought, oh, well, that's gorgeous. And that's what, two episodes in? Yeah. However many yeah. shooting days that is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, shooting-wise, yeah. Hey, it's Ryan and Greg. They do a smart move. Of, we got a forest, we got a cabin. It's pretty much it. And some ribbons. Yeah. Which we'll get to. Yeah. How do you feel about Ryan and, and Graham, Nicole? 
Ryan and Graham. I, yeah. I, I like them, and I think they're mm-hmm. fun. Uh, I wish it was a little less Graham and a little more Yaz, but... <laughs> um, you are not alone on that. <laughs> you know, several months removed from it, though. Like, I appreciate Graham a lot more, I think, when I'm looking at the episodes now than, like, after the season was airing. So it's not that I dislike Graham. It's just like, uh, I would like a t- just a touch less of Graham. Right. Yeah, I because I I read your uh, your posts on on Black Tardis. It was written I think New Year's Eve twenty eighteen. So like relatively recent after the uh, the series aired. And I think there's one part where you sort of say you know and Graham and you sort of had like the strike through on Graham, um, <laughs> which is kind of why I brought it up. But I, I'm glad you like him a little more. I've always liked him. It was just I felt like he was kind of really prominent um so i was just like we could we could it just felt like they needed like the older white guy to kind of make people feel comfortable because everybody else is kind of a divergence from what we're used to and so i was just like but let's just really go all the way and just really make people nervous if, you, if you're gonna do it let's just go all the way <laughs> right this kid looks like the unabomber by the way <laughs> but very cozy yeah you gotta be cozy in norway even fake norway which I will refer to as four way from now on. <laughs> Fjord way, please. Fjord way, yeah, Fjord that's probably way. A better. Not Norfolk. More circumspect. No. What's that, Chris? I said not Norfake. Norfake. No. That sounds like a tech com company. This place probably smells like a college dorm. It's actually pretty spooky. Like, be- because it's set in Norway, I know nothing of horror movies. I don't know if anyone on this podcast here is a a bit yeah but it's just like for some reason scandinavian horror movies seem scarier to me so the fact that they actually set this in norway makes like if this was like in i don't know essex it would be like (laughs) oh well essex essex would be filled with (laughs) douchebags yeah but (laughs) not isolated but the thing about scandinavian films are like it's just the Scandinavians are a moody bunch to begin with, and the weather's usually <laughs> kind of moody too. So, yeah. like, if you've ever seen, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, the Let the Right One In, or uh, anyway, there's the original Swedish version, which is a vampire movie, and it's great for all those reasons. It's very stark and moody and, mm-hmm. and full of morose Scandinavians. Are there any other kind of Scandinavians? Nope. No. Trust me, I've been to, I've been to uh, Finland and Sweden, and they are morose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. Good impression. Every last one of them. There's Yask asking the question. Yaz often plays the police, uh, the police woman in these. Like basically, what what were you doing at this time, madam? You know what I mean. Like in this season, she seems to be asking people questions to get the information out, but not so much actually having character moments. You know what I mean? Which is kind of annoying. Yeah. I don't know. What was your impression of uh, of Yaz this season? I think it's annoying because cool. she doesn't get to utilize it other than that for that reason. Like, oh, I'm a police officer. I'm not ask questions. But that's yeah. kind of the extent of her <laughs> utilizing any kind of training. Yeah. Maybe we'll get more of her next year. Assuming there is a next year. By the, by the time this commentary goes out, the next series of Doctor Who might have been canceled for all we know. So uh, <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> If you believe, talk about morose. If you believe the doomsayers on the internet, that might be. They might just say, "Yeah." Well, they have they have such an amazing track record that why wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, of course, yeah. I like the practical lighting here, and uh, the general dinginess of the joint. Mm-hmm. I actually love the whole interior. Like, I actually really like how this house looks, and it's like mm-hmm. I think there's, it's supposed to be creepy, but it's like very pleasing to me for some reason <laughs> like i would <laughs> love to like be there i guess i'm not from a city so it's like i don't know it just has that natural look to it i guess <laughs> so, so anything that's not like a big giant metropolis they go oh wow cabin in the woods with boarded up windows I mean, like, just yes, please. Oh. <laughs> you can take you can take the boards off it's not that hard <laughs> yeah or leave them on leave them on for the aesthetic <laughs> <laughs> unibomber aesthetic which we've been <laughs> carrying through yeah. here See, she talked about her training a lot. Oh, I, I trained in talking to people, talking them down. It's like, I would like her to see her do more than just like the base 
thing that we know that like offers us mm-hmm. do, which is like, oh, I know how to talk to people. Like, okay. Yeah. Or say she does it and then doesn't do right. it. Right. Or say she has training in it or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's, he's on my side on this. He's not even for Norway. <laughs> I speak out of complete ignorance. I've never been to Norway. <laughs> I love like the village aspect of this. <laughs> like, let's just have the sounds and keep the keep them inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, like the M Night Shyamalan village. What do you mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, episode title. Is that the only time that she says the episode title? Right there. Uh, you know, to be honest, I only watched this the one time, so this yeah. is yep. more or less new to me. I, I believe so. I want to say yes. Yeah, <laughs> just like we need, we need to see where we say the episode title. Can we just do a quick reshoot where she says the episode title? Because otherwise, we don't know what to call this thing. Mirror in the bathroom, perhaps. Frogs. Frogs. A frog, anyway. Hmm. Frog in a chair. Frog in the chair. I love the frog in the chair. I have to say, I, I, uh, uh, the, the recurring theme for these, this whole commentary series for, for us is that, you know, we, re- we release our episodes on Sunday. And so, like, watching series 11 was a pain to do a podcast because we had to quickly cram in one viewing of it, basically, and then record when we could. If we were lucky enough, we'd be able to watch it a second time. But, you know, we wouldn't necessarily get to settle into the episode. Uh, and so I watched it earlier today. And this was really affecting. I remember really liking it at the time, but boy, it it uh, it leapt up a lot in my estimation. Yeah, I also rewatched it before this just to kind of like make sure I remembered it how I thought I did, and I actually re- really felt like I liked it quite a lot more than I thought I maybe would on the rewatch. I thought like, oh, it's not gonna hit the same, but it actually was really, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I still can't believe how polarizing the frog was. I love the frog. <laughs> we'll get to it. I'm, I don't know if I'm a team frog, but I'm going to watch this again and determine whether or not well, I think, yeah, I th- my opinion has changed. I think you were, were not team frog for a summer. I don't think I was on team frog. I think it kind of lost me. Actually, but I think it lost me at ribbons to begin with. So <laughs> this is a great effect, though. I mean, yeah. oh, yeah. looks looks amazing. There's... There's a lot of weird stuff in this in this episode between, you know, the 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 kid and the noise and the clown and the frog and the mirror and then Yeah. It's a lot to take in. It it can be, yeah. This is another one of those episodes I feel like the storyline could have maybe been longer, had more episodes to it cuz like I would like to know quite a bit more about what's happening here, but they <laughs> they just like, well, we're going to give that 15 minutes at the end to Wrap that up. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it sometimes be that way, show. Like so, sometimes, like Doctor Who can do anything, but sometimes the fact that it's on television and has certain time restraints means it can't. You know, I, I think I've lamented about how, like, the Western episode, like, uh, but, 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 Town Called Mercy, it just feel like it wants to emulate a Sergio Leone film, but it's in 42 minutes if you're going to do the leota you got to be like two and a half hours you got to right. like let these moments the breathe yeah and i think to like i i thought this was effective but like you know i think having an even slower and more methodical pace at the beginning of this to really establish the horror i think would have been even more effective but you can't do that because you know it's right. Who. eventually you got to get going and see some monsters and stuff yeah that's i think that was with the overall season, which is like a lot of the stories, like most of them, some of them are self-contained and are great, but some of them could have been like, this would have been benefited um, by being like a much lower, slower burn. Cause mm-hmm. like, it's really cool. But it's like the cool stuff is happening kind of fast at the end. It's like, oh, okay. But I still like it. Given you, given you have to have the, have the rug pulled out from under you as far as like the whole, external creature thing goes which is mostly most of the horror aspect right yeah i guess you can't really spend i would say you could, can't spend that much time on it as, as far as setup is concerned so uh, it, it felt sufficient yeah, yeah. horror think, movies are all about the setup sorry nicole yeah 
No, actually, what I think is the problem was that the better story was what the solo track was trying to do, and that was right. shoehorning in. Whereas that could have been scary in and of itself, like, but it was more. I don't know. It was kind of very fast, so you didn't really get a chance to like be scared. And the doctor is scared in that moment, I guess. But as an audience, I'm like, okay, it's ten minutes left, so clearly something's about to happen, and it's gonna be over. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I meant. Like, just they kind of they put all the weight at the beginning where it could have been more toward the end, and it would have been, I think, a little more effective. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I th- I think something happens here because there was a. Uh, Instagram photo from like the model makers on the set or costumes or someone mm-hmm. on set and they posted a pic of like Jodie Whittaker and someone else in the scene next to these two creatures and it was during the making of this this uh, this episode and, and like in like this cave setting and those two creatures never showed up at all their scenes are completely excised from this episode so there are there's a huge chunk of plot I think that happens in this episode that's gone from right. the final cut, but I have no idea what what it is or where it would fit. Yeah, I can I can see that. Yeah. Ed Heim wrote this though. Um, who is? What do you do otherwise? Uh, well, he's writing episode. He's writing series twelve. Uh, I'll oh, say that. Okay. Never mind. Um, He's also apparently attached to his uh, this uh, reboot of Sapphire and Steel, which never seems to go away. Which, um, if you haven't seen Sapphire and Steel, it's bonkers, and this episode is very much befitting of a Sapphire mm-hmm. and Steel feel to it. But I don't know what else before that, actually. That's a heroic pose with the sonic screwdriver. He reminds me of what's his name on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, probably just because he looks like him. Yondu. Uh, oh. Mm, kind of. A little less blue, maybe, but yeah. A little less um, avuncular, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yondu is not... I don't know if I say avuncular. <laughs> describe well, compared it. to this guy, he's not He's not Golem, either, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he reminds me of Leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kind of looks like... What's his name? Warwick Davis. Um, Ex of Nightmare in Silver. Looking up uh, Ed Heim's TV credits, it's uh-huh. this and Skins. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, okay. He had, he had no TV credits between 2010 and 2018. Really? So you could just walk on set and write a Doctor Who episode and then get offered one again? Well, he's done a lot of theater and radio and stuff, yeah. of course, but as, as a lot of British folks will, but... even Holy... Hang on, no. Even then. Oh? The last... So I'm looking at his agent's agent web page and the last theater credit is 2012 the last radio credit is 2014 and then doctor who 2018 and then like a ton of stuff for for in development so it's like he had five years off hmm. i mean that's the entertainment industry sometimes you just aren't hot for some reason nothing to do with your talent either yeah but usually you expect people got to work, right? And you know, put food on the table and stuff. Yeah, maybe he's working down at the Tesco. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I get like, why they don't want to follow him, but also what is the alternative? They're very good <laughs> fine by having to follow him, but like, would you rather go into the cave by yourself with no light? I don't know. That's yeah. Cool. But if somebody said to me, Follow ribbons to missing daddy. That's a big old <laughs> siren for me. <laughs> I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> I, that 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 might go over well, like uh, you know, uh, for a certain segment of the Doctor Who fandom. Sure, I'm, yeah. I'm sure I'm not that segment. Yeah. <laughs> I was just one. thinking that ribbons. Would, that would make a good ribbon because yeah. it's ribbons. That's true. It would. That a is ribbons a- ribbon. That is my, by the way, sorry, we, we missed a bit when, when the doctor actually writes that. It's it's a rare bit of deception on the part of this doctor, you know, because he's often like, she's often the one that's sort of saying, uh, you know, everything's going to be fine. I'm sorry. Or like just owning up to whatever's happening. But she almost like takes advantage of the fact that Hannah can't see to write this message saying, you know, her dad's probably dead. Please don't tell her. It's it's kind of deceptive in a way, and everyone sort of goes around it. How high up is it? Because if she knows Braille, she can figure that one out. Uh, I don't. I, it's pretty high no, up. It's, I don't think she'd it, be able to reach uh, it with her hand. And it's written in right. chalk, so yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, you could yeah. probably feel the difference in the chalk 
I thought it was carved yeah. in gold. Oh no, that's just waste, like messing up. That's yeah. true. <laughs> be vandalism. Like, part of me wonders if this is me completely uh, speculating here. These whole bits with ribbons were written after the fact, perhaps to replace the scenes with the maybe the non-talking monsters. Because honestly, this this whole portion of the thing, nothing actually pertains to anything else with this episode. It just serves as kind of like just a barrier, an obstacle. That's what I felt like. Like, like it felt like this was a story. Yeah. Yeah. Like they changed the focus from whatever was happening in here to whatever was happening on the other side of the portal. Like mm -hmm. I felt like this was maybe meant to be a bigger part of it. But then I don't know. It, it feels to me like, you know, it could almost be like, let's just completely rewrite and reshoot the middle part. Cause it doesn't matter. We don't, it, they don't come back. I mean, ribbon, nothing from this void world comes into the cabin on either side of the, uh, the mirror. They could do whatever they like. And then you got to ask why, like what was so egregious about this previous portion? Maybe there just wasn't enough tension. I mean, maybe those monsters were like unspeaking or something. And so there wasn't enough of a menace or something. I mean, mm. you know, this is the stuff that, that nothing about characterization <laughs> or anything else uh, intrigues us on this podcast, Nicole. It's all, <laughs> no. why was this shot the way it was? I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's a valid question because it definitely, again, like feels like they were trying to, I don't know what they were trying to do, but I, maybe they got to that emotional point and thought, oh, let's focus more on that part with the reunion. Yeah. And so they didn't I want suppose, it to be yeah. too like, much of a drastic change between like whatever was happening originally in that part. And then we go to this and it's like a really awkward kind of jump, uh, sorry, juxtaposition. But maybe they were like, yeah. let's kind of ease into that part a little more uh, smoothly. Mm -hmm. Oof. Or maybe there's just simply too much stuff in the cave area, you know? I feel like they probably a problem with most of these episodes. They all feel like they were, like, there's a lot of story that is on a page that we're never going to see. <laughs> like, it felt like they, like, I have all these mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah. And then let's shoot it, and then whatever <laughs> sticks yeah. at the end is what we'll keep. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, you have a story based on, on a father abandoning his child and scaring her so he doesn't have to have a babysitter so he can go hang out with his wife in an alternate universe. <laughs> I know. Which seems weird. Like <laughs> I know Nor I know Norway is expensive, but <laughs> hire a babysitter. I think That's... it's more I think I think it's more proximity. I, they don't have <laughs> there's no there's no like babysitting service that they can hire. Mm -hmm. being out in the middle Move of to the woods. city. Problem solved. Well, they, <laughs> well they moved from the city. They moved from Oslo to the cabin so in the woods, yeah. Yeah. And look where I got him. Yeah. <clears throat> Good moss. These though. moths are disgusting. I mean, I just got to think about, like, when a moth flies, it's just, it's too close to the size of a bird. <laughs> so as an insect, it totally freaks me out when one shows up at my place. I'm like, ah! <laughs> and they're furry. It's like, everything an insect shouldn't be, they are. I know. That's why they're they're scary. At first, I thought I said Arizona. I'm like, oh, God, really? <laughs> I I mean, in some ways, Yaz also performs the fun the traditional function of the traditional Doctor Who companion. What is that doctor? Doctor explains thing to companion, as she did just there. I mean, they are kind of getting away with a lot. They've basically just got cave walls and a light. So having, and some creepy dude. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly. So they're getting a lot out of a little. Oh, yeah. sorry, Nicole. Oh, no, I was just saying, surprisingly, I can see this even though it's in the dark. And apparently some shows don't know how to light things that are supposed to be in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Name these criminals. Which which shows are you referring Ga to? Game of Thrones episode three, I think was what they Oh, that, that's yeah. definitely one of them. Yeah. yeah. But I just didn't have the right settings on my TV. So I guess that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the showrunners. They know better than us yeah. dumb viewers. <laughs> Needs to be brightly lit. Needs to be like 1980s Doctor Who. I mean, there's a shadow over there. Get rid of it. <laughs> Warriors of the Deep Lask yeah. kind of thing. And that's it for ribbons. Yep. Oh, well. I didn't much like him anyway, so. He's been cut to ribbons. Oh, boo. Pretty sure I'm the only person who's watched uh, all of Babylon 5 on this 
hear podcast recording, but a lot of people who would have had watched it compared Ribbons to Zathras, a character who <laughs> annoyed the hell out of me on Babylon 5. <laughs> was that a one-off or a recurring character? It was like two or three episodes he appeared in. He was really annoying. Give me a Star Trek analog here so I can relate. Uh, I can't on this. You um, know why? Because Star Trek is better. You hear that, Chip? Star Trek is better yeah. than Babylon 5. <laughs> I just think that it's so funny that she really just knocked Ryan out and ran into this portal. Like, I yeah. feel like we don't spend enough time like on how badass that is, especially because she was like scared of a monster, but like you don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also, as mentioned before, blind. So, I mean. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just like, I'm a they went through and they're not dead. You know, she doesn't actually know that, but I guess. Maybe that's why she doesn't. Right. <laughs> she doesn't know what's there to terrify her. Right. That's... Well, at least Ribbons isn't around a yeah. smugger or seller or something. And that actually is valid, though. Like, not knowing is somehow sometimes, like, I'm not scared of it because I don't know what to be scared of. Yeah, yeah. That's oh. how man got to the moon in 1969. <laughs> they had no idea what they were getting into, and that's why they went. Grit and stupidity. Yeah, and that's why we've never been back because we know, oh, boy, we really lucked out. <laughs> It'll take a lot more money and a lot more booze to convince other people to go up to the moon. So we haven't gone back. Here we are. See, this is looking a little more Ikea. <laughs> See, I like this version of the house is what it could be. This is the, the fixed. Oh, house. yeah. That's, that's the much better version. <laughs> yeah. This is the Airbnb <laughs> version right here. Yeah. <laughs> Did we? We didn't see anybody at Galley with a backward Slayer shirt, did we? Sadly, no. Because yeah, that, so that would have been an easy one to such do. Such easy yeah. cosplay. And I'm at a sandbagger shirt, so damn it. <laughs> I I assume they all they they shot just this as regular and just flipped it. Um, which hell, even uh, even me and my meager skills can do in uh, Adobe Premiere. It's not Premier. that difficult to produce a T-shirt, Stephen. Uh, well, their hairs are also. You'll notice Jodie yeah. Whittaker's hair. Yeah, that's part true. Of either oh, either yeah. way is easier. Yeah, everyone's uh, mirrored. Like, it's it's ridiculously easy to do in, in editing. Yeah, it's literally two mouse clicks. But you're right. You could also have two different t-shirts. Yeah, but and then flip it if you screwed and, and, it up and yeah. recomb everybody's hair. No, I, I never noticed the hair thing. I don't yeah, get the right logic now. of like just not bringing Hannah if you really thought that was his mom. I mean, her mom. Sorry. Yeah. Like, why leave her? Just bring her and y'all can be all together happy in this, like, idyllic <laughs> other world. I don't understand the logic of leaving her to maybe die. This guy's kind of like the dude in uh, Women Who Fell to Earth and the Crane, who turns out to be not so bright and not so good. <laughs> maybe he's the same. That is a good question. I never thought about that in the two times that I've watched this. Why didn't they just bring Hana? Well, there was some limitation, wasn't there? I can't, I can't remember. But he he wouldn't know that. Like he wouldn't know that until he tried. Like I, I feel like he didn't even yeah. attempt. Because like obviously they're bringing more people in. Like oh, we have all of them. So well, he I don't know. Maybe he wants to just do things with his wife and uh, doesn't want the daughter around to. Yeah, I mean that's valid. <laughs> wow, <laughs> finally a weekend away. <laughs> Uh, I got to say, this, and this is only for my Vancouver people listening to this. This is the ultimate mountain equipment co-op couple right here. This is this is the <laughs> oh smugly, self-assured, environmentally crunchy Vancouver couple in their, in their catalog perfect house. Are they from Norway too or? Uh, no, they're just oh. Vancouverites. Those two well, actors be, actually were, those actually, those two actors actually were from Norway. Uh, the actor playing Hannah is not. Oh, here we go. Trace. This is what I mean about that, like, weird, like, cut from the, like, happy-go-lucky side to the cave. I kind of like it, though. Yeah, I mean, this bit here. It's just, just the hard, like, oh, what? Wow. You but know, I think it probably kinda... was worse. I think they probably, like, no, we can't keep doing That's a little jarring. I think they yeah. made a, yeah. toned it down from what it probably yeah. was. This looks really good. Well, did look really good. Yeah. Uh, just the, the alternate universe and the cinematography they're in. In fake Norway. How do we know we're not the fake Norway? It's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question. Like, it's funny because she wasn't scared until he got there. Now, 
She's like, I need to know what's happening. What's in front of me? Like, she didn't care at all until he got there. <laughs> well, she d- yeah. she did like, deck him, so maybe she's like, hmm, what was I thinking? It's a cool balloon. Kind of want to see see those balloons at Gallifrey One too. Actually. I'm getting a real it vibe off this. I want to know how they made every. I want to know all the back behind the scenes stuff that went down with the making of the series. Like is that is that scenery or is that like they're probably not in a legit cave? I would assume. Oh no, they're not in a legit cave. I'm just like all these scenes though with the you know, with the missing giant monsters. That oh, never, I see. You know that sort of thing. We're not told enough. Get to the internet. I'm sure they'll have some answers. No, for well, you. they'll have speculations, but uh, in 20 years time on the series 11 uh, uh, 8K Blu-ray when it comes out. <laughs> We'll get all of our answers then when everybody's when everybody's gonna talk. I suppose logistically too, <laughs> as we talk over this emotional reunion, uh, having Sharon D. Clark there on that same basically the first production block is all she works oh, on. Oh, I guess that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, she appears very briefly in. Uh, Arachnids in the UK, but I do like she's not buying it too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that she's uh, that she's at first she's like, "Am I real or not?" As yeah. opposed to just going along with it. I wonder what came first, the necklace or the like? Did they see the end and work their way back from that, or did they mm-hmm. <laughs> get to the necklace and like, you know what, we should just make frog talk at the end? <laughs> yeah, I, well, yeah, it's a good good point. I don't know. <laughs> Seriously. I would guess it's the frog first and then the necklace. Yeah. Because that would be the easier thing to produce, one from the other. But I don't know that for a fact. But then, like, why, though? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, good what? point. What? Yeah. <laughs> why the frog? Yeah. Why, why would Grace get a frog necklace? That That's a whole episode. In Did they put any, like, frog stuff in Women Who Fell to Earth? I don't recall. Like, there was no cell no. stuff in the background or anything? We should have watched more closely. <laughs> Did they ret frog anything? Oh. Yeah, ret frogging. <laughs> I like the geography of this house. You're right, actually. The the triangle window that sort of like matches the lines of the uh, the triangle roof. Mm-hmm. Doesn't she mention her Gallifrey and Peronage here? Uh, oh. Or am I thinking of a different one? I think you're. Th- Where she oh, talks wow. about her multiple grannies. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Oh, okay, good. I'm not going no. crazy. Hmm. I remembered something for once. <laughs> Hooray! We were trying to figure out the logistics. Like, was it the same granny in several regenerations? Was it? I. It's. <laughs> yeah. several... It's more like I'm continually I... puzzled by Gallifreyan parentage. Mm-hmm. And pretty much everything about Gallifrey. I saw somebody know, mention today. So Gallifrey came back. It's been about six years and we haven't done a damn thing with it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fair. Past, I guess, with heaven or hell bent. But that's pretty much the last we've heard of Gallifrey. See this whole, <laughs> see, this whole scene is Yaz just looking baffled and basically waiting for the doctor to... There we go. At seven. Uh, waiting to come up with the answer, essentially. I I feel like they could have involved her more. I'm putting money down that uh, Gallifrey and Parentage is a polyamorous cult, yeah. based on what she's telling us here. It, it makes like, sense to me. I like see. Jody, <laughs> Jody might as well Seems be looking fair. right at the camera for this, you know? Right. Like, I wish it was worked out where, like, maybe Yaz was sort of bouncing questions off. Like, we'd literally just cut away to her confused reaction. Right. Yeah, she doesn't say much, but she's just kind of... No. <laughs> That's a good point, though. I never heard of the solid track either, though. 
the solid track plane. Well, I mean, it's not the first time Doctor Who's made something up on the fly. That's good. Yeah. That's a funny question, considering you're in an alternate universe. Yeah. And she knows she's like she died. She's fully aware of it. So the question of what you're doing in Norway is hilarious. Like, why are you alive? <laughs> Randy five. <laughs> I like that. That's who somebody should cosplay as. Well, Just get like a well, Time Lord outfit and a Granny wig and <laughs> yarn. Well, I I like that she uh, she refers to them as Granny five and Granny two, and not the fifth grandmother or the second grandmother. <laughs> oh God! She should just call them two and five. Two and five, yeah. The whole ordinal or versus G2 cardinal G5. debate. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. What about the war granny? Is she in there too? Or <laughs> oh. well, what the grandyard? Oh. oh, ouch! This, uh, this, I, I do like this conversation just because, you know, he's seen it's, the universe oh. now, and you know, Grace probably should have been there with him, and I, I just, I like his sort of boyish enthusiasm of telling her about this but it's almost feels sad like hey right. here's all, all those things that you wanted to do and i didn't really well i'm doing them but you're dead <laughs> so yeah that's why oh. it's like one of those things that it's it's fun to see like i'm happy to see it but also i'm like i would have it reminds you that you didn't get to see grace do it and have those experiences so it's mm -hmm. one of those things where like i like it but i also feel like you could have just you know let us have grace and then she could have been telling him or you know <laughs> they could have been telling yeah. somebody else but yeah. You know, like like you you said in your blog post, Nicole, about how, you know, the, Grace is dying is essentially, you know, uh, for Graham's character arc and not even so much Ryan. I mean, it's its yeah, own yeah. Nan and, she, and he barely is actually affected by her loss, you know? Yeah. Like I was even thinking it for this episode, like I would have liked to maybe for Ryan to have seen a glimpse of her to know like, and to react like we get to see Graham have the whole conversation. They actually get some kind of closure in a way. And mm -hmm. Ryan just hears about it. Like, oh, I saw your grand and it wasn't her. But, you know, I got to talk to her. Like, I feel like they didn't give him any way to have. I mean, like Graham kept getting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah learning, learning secondhand yeah. Uh, that his his grand was there. Where's Nan? Nan. I have to get these. Uh, <laughs> reverse the polarity. But why would she know that? Because Fanwake, that's why. <laughs> Ugh, that's disgusting. Those are impressive moths. Impressive moths. Oh, yeah, they are. The, v the VFX are good. Yeah, they really are. Good job, D Neg. Oh, uh, that's the effects company. Yeah. Deanne, who did stuff on Chernobyl and... I love that she called for Ryan and like 10 minutes ago, she was like, I don't want to even talk to you. <laughs> it's like yeah. such a cute little thing. Uh-huh. So did did you have an uneasy feeling back in episode one that uh, that Grace was not going to make it out of that uh, alive? Yeah, it was pretty clear. Probably, I mean, it was like a sneaky suspicion maybe in the first ten minutes because she was so gung ho about everything. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as they started stuff, she was very like, "I want to know what's going on. I'm with it." Like I was like, "Oh, okay." She's too she's too <laughs> excitable. Like Grandma's like, "I don't want to. Why, why are we? This is not our business." I don't care. Why are we looking at stuff? Why are we helping? Like he didn't want to be involved at all. And she was so ready to be involved and like it it kind of mirrored. She was just like, so active. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Uh, like we all kind of and I was like live tweeting, several of us were live tweeting. And I like a lot of my friends were all like, okay, I hope what we think is gonna happen is it gonna happen, but it feel like it's gonna happen. And like that started maybe 15, 20 minutes into the episode, but definitely by like Third, a third of the way through, you're like, yeah, they're definitely gonna, they're gonna do the thing. Oh, so it was like kind of brave for it, but it still was very upsetting when it happened. Like y'all really did it. I thought maybe they would subvert it a little bit. Like, no, we're not gonna do that. It's too obvious. But they did uh -huh. it. 
in some ways, like her enthusiasm and like, yeah, let's do this. I'm all in kind of matches Donna Noble in Mm -hmm. the first episode of season four. Yeah. Uh, You know, it's like, oh my God, it's a doctor. I'm ready. I got my bags packed. Let's go. Let's do this. I'm ready to be a companion to everything. Yet she gets the time of the TARDIS. Right. Grace. Yeah. She was very like primed to be. Yeah. And she was like a perfect kind of companion in terms of like just wanting to do everything and being very like excited about it and kind of just the curiosity and not being afraid. So of course that felt to us like watching like, okay, she's a little too perfect to be a companion. Like there will be nothing that she will be afraid of. Like what is her story? That's where it started to feel like. So we were just like, okay, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think, yeah, I think it was pretty obvious about halfway through, like they are definitely going to take her off the team somehow. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't the type of person to says, wow, I'm really enthused by all this, but I think I'm going to stay behind and you all can go, you know, travel the galaxy right. and stuff. Yeah. But she was too, it was too obvious that she would, she's too enthused about it to be like, for them to like, then have to, Oh no, she's not coming for this reason or that reason. Like the only thing they could kind of do is do what they did. Yeah. But they put themselves in that position. So. Mm-hmm. I don't forget them for Also, it. we knew we knew who the companions were going to be ahead of time, so we were kind of right ready to like think this through. And if we didn't know, we wouldn't, right? Yeah. Or would less anyway. Like she was announced as like, oh, and she'll be like a, a recurring role. I think it was when they announced the cast, mm-hmm. which um, wasn't untrue, but it was less yeah. true than we wanted it to be. That's cold. <laughs> I love that this part he realizes it's not her because of how she reacts about him saying like Ryan's out there. And she's like, okay, he's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. And that's when he snaps mm-hmm. out like, Oh wait, she would never ever leave Ryan in danger like that. So like, I love that they feel, even though Ryan isn't getting to interact with her, like the connection to him is what kind of pulls Graham out of his little stupor. Yeah. It's a good, subtle performance from Bradley Walsh. I'm continually surprised by this guy's skills. Yeah. Which I shouldn't be, but I am. This is a softly, like, Time Lord Victorious kind of speech, but in a kind of reverse way. It's like, it's so much bravado to it but not really like if she said that in a different situation like to an enemy it would be very like braggy like yes i've done all this but the way she's talking about it it's very like sweet in a way like you should take me because i can give you the experiences you want but like if she said that to like an enemy it would sound very threatening in a way yeah yeah Together we could rule the universe as right. father and son, that sort of thing. Like I've seen everything. I've been everywhere. I know all these things. <laughs> yeah. But like, because <laughs> she's saying it in a way like, I'm going to share these experiences with you. It's very kind of pleasant and like a sweet moment as opposed to being a threatening kind of hostile. Yeah. <laughs> On the chair. Are they still in the beer line? They are still in the beer line. Of course they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot for a second which which way Jody normally parts her hair, and so it wasn't until they cut back to uh, uh, Eric's Eric. T-shirt that I realized that okay, we're still in backward Slayer. There we go. Slayer is put reformed once again, which is the real key to this whole thing. It it really is. It's actually quite a spoiler when they had uh, pics of... Oh, there's a trailer shot. Um, uh, pics of Eric with the background backwards. Uh, say, uh, I was going to say Sailor. Slayer shirt on. And we have <laughs> now I want that font level. with Sailor. Yeah. Here's the linchpin of the whole episode right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's going on here, Kermit? It's coming. It's coming. See, that, that's 
it's that the fact, the fact that the doctor is like, why is there why is there a frog? You know, the fact that she is like, what? If she was like 100% <laughs> accepting it, I think the rest of us would go, what? Come on. But the but fact is, that she, I'm just, the doctor right now. I'm like, what is going on here? Yeah. The, if the doctor <laughs> finds it strange, then um, okay, then I'm buying it. I thought, yep, I love it. Your, your thoughts on the frog, Nicole, it's, the frog on the chair. I think it's just a outlandish thing. So it's like you can't really feel one way or the other. Like it's why... Like I'm not, I don't dislike it, but I'm also like I don't understand how we got here. Right. And it's on yes, a ch- like I don't, I don't know why the chair it. is what really sets me off for some reason. Like, <laughs> why is the frog on a chair? Like, what is it? No, on a pedal. I don't know something else. Like it was so weird to me. Like the choice. <laughs> so for me, it's just like the soul attract. I guess pulled this from Grace's memory or something. Like, okay, you're the frog, and humans sit on chairs, so I'm a <laughs> pop this frog on the chair. Like it's just such a funny thing to me. And right. I don't dislike it. I just like I don't. I would like to know, have been in the room for that conversation. <laughs> yeah, who put that chair there? <laughs> like, why are we yeah. doing that? I think it's both. I bet you probably said, "Well, you know what? To have Jody's eye line looking down on the floor is too much. Can we prop up the frog somehow?" <laughs> no, we, maybe. Yeah. Is there a chair? Is there a chair in the studio at all? Can we use? I'd rather it was if we could throw the turn around and the frogs are like a little yeah. crown on its head. But, you know, the great thing is, is that, yes, it's a sentient universe. It could be anything or nothing. Why not? I mean, it could be a frog on a chair just as easily. It could appear to be like a planet or something like that. Right. So I'll say this. Better than ghost light. (laughs) (laughs) Better than ghost. Warren, that is the lowest bar that you ever clear. Well, if we're talking surreal nonsense, uh, better than ghost light, probably equal with Warrior's Gate. I also like the... um, uh, the fact that it's a practical effect and not entirely convincing uh, uh, with CGI's and maybe the... Bre- Actually, I think the breathing kind of looks uh, when they cut back to the frog again here. Like, I think that's an actual breathing. Like, you know, this, <laughs> maybe the nod is. I don't know. But I just love the fact that that's like a practical puppet. You can almost hear the gears. Oh, trailer shot coming. There we go. Oh, how we speculated when that trailer came out. It's like, who is the doctor blowing a kiss to? Maybe it's the TARDIS going away. Maybe it's her companions or her friends or something. No, it's a frog on a chair. (laughs) It's a frog with ninja skills. Yeah. Jedi skills. (laughs) Well, I I love that she's They're basically Jedis. I love that she's genuinely sad about like not being able to talk and hang out with the solo track. Like she's really like, I can't believe I just met this most amazing person and I can't even like it's so kind of like wild after what we just watched for her to just be like I can't believe I have to leave like I have to yeah. take people home I guess I don't know like <laughs> I'd much rather stay here and talk to this other universe like she really really when, like even when she's talking to the frog she's just like I can't like I just met you <laughs> like this is I love what this could be but it can't it's too dangerous I just yeah. love the way they that. <laughs> so this is crazy. I just met you. <laughs> so call me, maybe. I love this. They're hugging and like they were so against each other. They're actually very telling the truth because she. Oh, there we go. Proper Slayer. I mean, he was right about her dad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the dad messed up. He Something fierce. definitely abandoned her. Like, yeah. I don't think he would have come back. Like, I'm pretty sure he was wrapped up to a point where, like, he would have stopped caring enough to even come back to, like, make sure everything was okay. Like, I feel like he would have left her for real, for real, if they hadn't came. So I find yeah. it kind of interesting that, like, the doctor was like, yeah, you're fine. You're, you're going to go here. Like, I feel like she would have chewed him out a little more. Or, or maybe he was lured. I mean, I'm I'm doing, I'm doing like my ha- best. To def- <laughs> he was in a way because like we saw Graham get lured, so we know there's yeah. some kind of manipulation involved. But also like it's a child, so I think usually your parental yeah. instincts is a touch stronger. I would think. I don't know. I don't have kids, but he's yeah. just a bad dad, basically. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I I do like that. I like that. Uh, you know, he feels the 
he feels w- awful right. and sort of like everything comes together for him like oh my god what have i done right. when he like, yeah, once he's away what, from it and kind of like out of the influence like wow. well, yeah I, well he's he looks over and saw and saw the uh on the the scribbling on the wall there you know assume her dad is dead it's like oh my god they told her that i'm dead because why wouldn't yeah like just in that moment he realized that he abandoned her so yeah, I'm defending this Norwegian deadbeat dad. I am sorry about that. But, <laughs> no, way to go. You, know. you picked the wrong horse to back, my friend. Well, well, at least he's taking her back to the city so she can um, like not be in the middle of the forest by herself. Um, yeah. You know, apparently bears are an actual threat. So that's something he should have maybe been concerned about beforehand that's, anyway. That's <laughs> Where to keep my blind daughter? I know the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right. Like AKA there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. he was already a bad dad, and then he just progressively <laughs> got worse. <laughs> got How can I be even more terrible? <laughs> I know. I'll light up speakers all around the yard and <laughs> turn this into like a Stasi camp. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Okay. And also, this is the first time Ryan says "granddad," which was actually a really sweet moment. Mm-hmm. Even though we like laughed, like we joked about it initially, like here it goes. But like it was actually a cute little moment. Yeah. I'm glad they were... waited to like the end of the season to start making that a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and also like just the way that he does it. Right. You know, he, he does it because he needs it at that point. He needs something to sort of feel better about, you know, to sort of knock things off kilter and change the subject a little bit to make him mm-hmm. and then doesn't repeat it. I kind of like that too, where he doesn't repeat it. Like I, I'm, I, I'm only giving you this one. I don't have it in me to um, continue. <laughs> we call this. Yeah. I love that. I do like the, I think you call them grandpa as yeah. a gram pa. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's lovingly. He's lovingly known as grandpa. You got to spell it with <laughs> Graham, but the PA at the end. Yeah, exactly. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was top notch in your part. <laughs> Thank you. There it is. That's it, Bill. Oh, it's done. Oh. Mm-hmm. This next cool. one really like that episode. I the damn yeah, thing. I did too. I really did like, despite some of the faults we picked apart on this, I, I really <laughs> rather enjoyed that. I liked it better this time, for sure. Yeah. I think you know yeah. it's happening. Like, like you kind of prepare for this, like, for it to go up yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. hey, now I can enjoy that. But at first, you're like, okay, wait. Why? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, show? Yeah, like it's get it it's back a, on track. Yeah, it's a. It, oh, there it is. It's a. It's a tough thing to watch Doctor Who or anything really when you know you have to review it, and so you want to sound concise and come up with points and stuff like that. So sometimes it does affect how you're going to watch it, and mm-hmm. that's why I like. Uh, I like going back to these well after the fact. And this one's a lot to take in first time out too. So it did a little yeah. bit, yeah. Well, that was fabulous. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us here, mm-hmm. watching some Doctor Who on this here commentary series of this podcast. Uh, wh- where can the, the the people, the good folks of the internet find you uh, out there in the world? Um, I'm Black Tardis at um, all the social, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Tumblr, um, and the blog is Black in Space and Time, but it's T-I dot M-E, like a play on words. So that's where you can find me. It's clever. What it, What is the country code for M-E? I think it literally just dot me to mean like yourself. I don't know if it's a country code, but okay. I actually don't know. That's the only way I've ever seen it used. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I know that some of them like, you know, are like country codes. And yeah, stuff dot and I-N stuff. is like India, and I've used that before as well. Exactly. Mon- Montenegro. Wow. Montenegro. Okay, Mon- there we go. There we are. Oh, okay. Montenegro. I was going to say Maine, uh, which is not a country. <laughs> <laughs> dot main dot main why not main can have their own domain um all right uh as you saw next week is the last episode of of the series but we're kind of counting resolution as episode 11 of this so uh we're doing a commentary next week on the finale uh of series 11 the battle of ranscore av kolos so until next time i am steven in edmonton warren of vancouver and chris in edmonton so long for now You've been listening to Radio Free Scaro. Find us online at RadioFreeScaro.com. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Radio Free Scaro. Subscribe to us on iTunes and donate to the show at Patreon.com forward slash Radio Free Scaro. Thank you. Radio Free Scaro.